So I let like me ask you something. You yeah. watching Battle Royale, yeah, you're 13. What, what did you see the movie? Uh, I actually, we have Compton Cable, and it just got on, on demand. So I you being 13, how do your parents feel about you watching, uh, <laughs> watching rated R movies now? Oh, well, it's just me and my dad. My mom passed away a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. You and your dad pretty close? What? You and your dad pretty close? Uh, sort of. But, uh, yeah, we watched, we're watching, uh, I think the original Black Christmas in a couple of days, so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man, you're getting a good education in some of these uh, some of these horror movies if you're watching <laughs> Black Christmas. But your dad's a pretty cool guy if he's not only letting you watch that, but he's watching it with you, so. Yeah. i got to ask you a question, though. In your opinion, Yeah. Uh, what do you think is scarier, watching all uh, all four saws? like at night pitch black in your room when all the lights are off or watching black Oh, I can tell you already, but go ahead. Or watching a, a wa Black Christmas. Or watching Black Christmas. Uh, neither one of those scare me, but I, I would do anything. To, i tell you what. It is very frightening watching Saw late at night with nobody else around because I hate those movies. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like any of them. I, Saw 2 actually was okay, but I've had to sit through the same thing over and over again. Do those movies scare you? Do they really scare you? They really were just gore, in my opinion. I was about to say, man, you're a black belt. You can, you, you can beat the hell out the Saw Man and the Saw Puppet. What the hell are you getting scared of? Eh? Ain't nothing scary about Saw. Only I mean, movie I, that's really freaked me out is It by Stephen King. I was about to say, if I watch, if I, hey, look, if I'm you, I wouldn't be scared of anything, really, not in a movie. You, it, you know, so many other things to be scared of in movies these days other than, other than Saw. Have you seen this movie called Wreck that I keep recommending to people? No, I haven't. Now, you want to get into something. Look, Saw, I'm going to tell you something. Saw is, because you look like you're a, a budding horror fan. You're, you're up and coming. Yep, Saw is something sure. that you just watch for, for gore. That's really, it's, it's the same gimmick over and over again. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. There's nothing really scary there anymore. I mean, if it started out scary, and then even at the beginning, it was just kind of gross and freaky. It wasn't really scary. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. What kind of contraption can they make to rip somebody apart uh, or, or, or whatever they do? Well, I heard in Saw 5 there's actually a trap that can possibly kill the actor, so they have paramedics standing by. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's Internet rumor, man. I don't buy that for a minute. <laughs> that's, uh, that's somebody <laughs> putting something out there. They, 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 they're screwing with you, dude. That, that, there's, there's no way a studio is going to hold themselves liable by possibly killing an, an, an actor. I, uh, I don't know. I mean, that's look what at I Heath heard. Ledger, like... <laughs> no, that's, that's bullshit, man. I mean, if you look at Heath Ledger, that the, the business is going to be tenfold for the for uh, the the Dark Knight. So maybe they maybe they do want to kill actors. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I seriously doubt that's true. But no, if you really want to watch something that's that's scary and suspenseful, uh, watch this movie Wreck. I mean, it's it's Wreck. It's, Wreck. it's R. Let me spell it for you. R E C. Uh, I, I, you might be able to find it on DVD. They're doing a remake of it in America called Quarantine. Now, the reason why I love this movie is because it's not about I, while well, I love blood and gore, it's just not about that. They actually set up atmosphere. They create tension. What this movie is about is uh, there's, a, there's this apartment building that they get a call from, the fire department, and there's a TV crew that's following the fire department that night. And they go to this apartment, and when they get in there, they find this, this old woman who's just gone crazy, like she has rabies or something. And let's just say that she attacks someone, and whatever she has starts to spread. Now, oh, the scary thing about is What's that the one where the uh, they become zombies and then they quarantine the house and they have camera crews inside? That's that's the movie. Yeah, they have to seal oh. off the area because because they don't want this to get out. And you think um, an apartment building in the middle of the city. This this is a, is a Spanish movie, by the way. So yeah. and the, the remake is going to be set in L.A. But you're thinking uh, an apartment building set in the middle of the city. How scary can that be? And inside that apartment building, the whole time it just gets crazy and crazy and more tense and more tense. You got to set up mood, atmosphere. And some sort of realism, thinking that wow, this, this could probably happen to me to to really create something scary. Unlike Saw, where it's just like, okay, this fucking puppet is talking to me again, and they got somebody trapped in this barbed wire. I, I I'm I'm personally getting tired of that myself. So I don't know. I got tired of it after the first movie. I just wanted to tell my friends that I watched all the Saw, since all of them say it's the scariest movie they've seen. Oh jeez. Well, hey, you be the kid. Okay, you, Connor, you between you and me, you be you're smarter than these guys. Okay. I'm telling you this right now. I, I I believe this in you. It's up to you to teach these kids what's good and what isn't. If they think Saw is scary, then you be the one to tell them. My uncle Corey that told me that that Wreck is a better movie. It's gonna scare the hell out of you. 
I challenge all you guys to go home and watch this by yourselves in the dark. And they're going to come back telling you. They're, they're probably lying to me, man. I wasn't scared. But I guarantee you the night they saw it before, when they were by themselves, they peed their pants. <laughs> I got a um, – is it popular? Are you able to find it? You can find it. If, I mean, look online and see if you can find a DVD from from Spain or something. And uh, I, you know, I don't want to tell anybody. Look, if there's some place you can't get it. I don't, I don't promote downloading, but hey, it's it's online somewhere if you really I really want. That's, to that's it. where I saw it on Tudo. Okay, yeah, it's somewhere. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's out there. I'm telling you, yeah, pirating is bad and whatever. But not everybody can see the movie. And I want to spread the popularity of the movie. I'm, so there you go. So anyway, anything else, Connor? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, co-host and you are the best reviewers on the site. No offense to Carlisle, Cyrus, and Leon, but I just, I honestly, I got to say, you guys are the funniest, and especially co-host, since he manages to bring in actual good points along with the... <laughs> That's the first thing I've ever heard, that he brings in good points doing a review, because all he does well, is... Well, the one I have in mind is never back down after he's done being crazy and on mess, and he, uh, <laughs> he gives some good points. Well, hey, my man, look, everybody has their favorites on there. Um, there's a lot of people who I'm, I'm sure they think I'm just I'm just there to provide synonyms for the review. So I, everybody has who they like. I, I, uh, <clears throat> my biggest concern is that everybody's represented and, 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 the, site, and the site does well. So uh, as long as we're all bringing something to it different, then I'm happy. Like I said, I'm not the kind of person that really concentrate on uh, who likes me better and all that kind of stuff. So, But I really hey, thank you for doing that, though. That's a very nice thing for you to say. Okay, sorry, just one last thing. If we, if no, I go have ahead. time for one last question. No, we, we got time, man. There's not a whole bunch of people in here, but we're going to make it kind of quick. What's up? Okay. Uh, first of uh no, not first of all, just the only question is, I hear you guys joking along all the time on the reviews about how you make so little. Out of curiosity, and if it's too personal, that's fine, but how much do you guys make? That is a, a matter of professional cur- uh, courtesy, and we can't we can't really tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's just say time. okay. You know what? I can give you I can give you a, I can give you a good idea. We okay. can we can afford to eat at Taco Bell. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> we will never go hungry as long as they have a ninety nine cent menu somewhere in the city. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> okay, thanks. It was great talking to you, and it was great uh, talking to the real person. Hey man, it was it was a pleasure talking to you too. I'm having a lot of, uh, I'm having a lot of fun talking to you guys. So I will I will talk to you later. Okay, see you. All right, bye, Connor. Bye. Well, so far this feels a whole lot smoother to me just being here by myself and doing this, and I am getting I am able to get more uh, more listeners in this way. Not that we had that many tonight, but at least we have enough to fill a whole hour. So let's go ahead and move on to our. Next caller here, which is area code 856. 856, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. Ooh, a lady. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Amanda. Amanda? Amanda. Oh, wait a minute. Is this, is this the same Amanda that I talked to before? Yep. How you doing, Amanda? Amanda, what, do you just sit by that, that phone waiting for, wait, waiting for me to do a show so you can call me? No, actually, right now I'm doing a puzzle. You're doing a puzzle. What kind of puzzle are you doing? You, now, how old are you right now, man? Doing what? A thousand-piece puzzle. A thousand-piece puzzle. That's pretty smart because you're what? You're seven years old now? Is that... Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, okay. I, I just knew you were really young. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you, were the, you were actually the girl, Amanda, that made me sit back and think, damn, I, I, I feel like – I almost feel like a, a, the dirty uncle. Talking to you guys the way I do, just not, just just using all kind of curse words and giving this whole personification of me being a, a pimp and all that kind of stuff. But I, you know I'm a good guy, right, Amanda? You know I'm okay. Uh, so what's going on? What's on your mind? Um, wait. Before I actually ask my question, um, one of my friends used to live in Texas, and she said that if you strap a dollar to your shirt and it's your birthday, people will give you money. Wait a minute. What? One of my friends in my school used to live in Texas. They said that, like, on their birthday, they strapped a dollar to their shirt. People would give them money for their birthday. I, you know, I've seen people do that here. At first, I thought you were talking ridiculous, but I've actually seen people do that. But, look, I don't think it's anything where 
okay, you make it sound like like that's a Texas law or something. If I see you with a dollar in your shirt, I got to give you a dollar. No, it's not like that. No, it's I didn't know it was just in Texas. I've seen people with their birthdays and they had the the dollar uh, taped to their shirt or whatever, and. I think maybe their friends will give them money or it's a sign of, hey, wish me a happy birthday. But, no, we don't We don't walk down the street just giving money to strangers just because they have a dollar to st- uh, take to their shirt. Do you know, if that was the case, Amanda, do you know how many homeless people would be doing that? We wouldn't have any homeless people because they'd be able to just walk down the, sh- down the street with a dollar strapped to their shirt. By, by the end of the day, they'd be able to buy a house. Probably. <laughs> Your, your friend is pulling your leg. Your friend is trying to get you to come here with a dollar strapped to your shirt, and she's going to get you attacked. Somebody's going to see that dollar on your shirt, and they're going to jump you for it. So don't, no, don't let your friend lead you that way. And that's No. No. You still there, man? Yeah. That that 1,000-piece puzzle kicking your ass right now, isn't it? Mm, not really. I just The only thing that's really annoying me is because I'm working on the sky, and all the colors are the same. It just sounds like you were concentrating real hard. I'm like, Amanda, you, you look like you just got steam coming out your ears right now because you, you're looking at that puzzle so hard. So what's your, what's your question, Amanda? Um, what type of material do they use on the pants in movies? Because, like, even with anime, because like the shirt comes off immediately and stuff, and then like the pants don't even rip half the time. Well, what, what, what particular case are we talking about? Um... Well, I'm not going to say, like, any anime, but, like, just let's go with the Hawk days that, like, just came out. What, first of all, what, what, <laughs> are you watching movies and just taking notes that pants don't tear? <laughs> what, what is, you, you creep me out here. What's your thing about looking at movies and saying, wow, that person's pants didn't tear? What, what's going on with you? Uh, you got some no. kind of pants um, fetish. <laughs> No, I actually was watching this um commentary on one of my DVDs that like it actually mentioned something like that, and then I actually got thinking like how many cases actually does happen. Amanda, let me tell you something. I'm I'm, I'm gonna be serious here, okay? I think you need help. I think I think you have a thing for pants. And you like to see them being torn, and and one of these days you're going to hurt somebody if you don't be careful. I don't know what the hell you were talking about right now, <laughs> but it, it I have to I have to admit I, I thought I think you're you're a sweet girl, bless your heart. I, I think you're wonderful, but this this whole pants thing is creeping me out with you. It's not really that much of a serious question. In other words, you didn't have anything you wanted to talk about. You just wanted to call and talk to me, didn't you? Uh, no, my internet isn't working. And your internet isn't working, so you don't know what to do with it. Wait a minute. If your internet's not working, how did you know I had a show? Um, because it was working earlier. Uh-huh. Yo, Amanda, why don't you just go ahead and admit it? You, you, you got bored. You knew I was doing this, and you just wanted to talk to me. We can talk. It's okay. You don't have to make up a, a, a crazy question about people's pants tearing up and and talking about your internet don't work. We, we're, we're friends right now, right? Yeah, but it isn't a lie. <laughs> Because um my sister has like the whole hub. These are because I'm getting like wireless internet. So like something happened to her computer, so I don't get any internet. I'm just saying, Amanda. Look, I I I I grew up in Waco. You think where do you where do you live? Um, New Jersey. In Jersey, oh well. At least you got something to do in Jersey. I'm from Waco. I, I was the, now imagine being in a town like Waco where nothing is absolutely going on, and being 13 at the time. If we if I wasn't hanging out at Dairy Queen, which wasn't very often, I had nothing to do. So I know how it is to be bored, and you got probably something to do, like, hey, call this crazy guy up on his website and talk to him. We're friends. You can talk to me. You ain't yeah, got to make up crazy stuff. I anything to do here either. Well, you're 13. You don't need to do anything. You need to keep your ass at home. Work on puzzles. You're doing what, you're doing what a 13-year-old girl should do. Got your ass in the house working on a puzzle where your parents can see you. You're a good kid. Yeah. I like that. Your parents are doing a good job. You know, it, it, as a matter of fact, let me ask you something. Do your parents have you chained up to the table? No, I'm in my room. That's what I would do. I'd have you chained up to the table and make sure you don't get away, that you stay there and work on that puzzle, and I can keep an eye on you. So. What would I possibly be doing? <laughs> what could you possibly be doing? Uh, honey, have you not seen – You, I remember your last question to me was, you haven't been to a junior high school in a long time, have you? I No, I – Pretty much have not, but I know what goes on now. I mean, the way you make it sound, 
It sounds like you got all kind of pregnant girls walking down the hallways and guys shooting at each other. There's nothing like that. Just people are pretty much obsessed with, like, all this weird stuff. Like pants on people, not tearing up. No. <laughs> right. Well, well, Amanda, look, I'm going to tell you something. We, we, we got about 15 minutes left, and we had more callers than I thought we would. So anytime you want to call, you go right ahead. You hear me on the air, you call me. We might not have a long conversation, but next time just say, hey, I just want to talk to you, Corey, because if you bring me up, if you bring up another question like you did today, I'm going to think you're insane, and I'm going to ask to talk to your parents and, put, and have them put you in a nut house. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Well, pretty much technically everybody's insane on a certain level. All right. See, this is why I got in this conversation because you, you're making me go insane right now. <laughs> so anyway, what, so what's, the, what's, what's that puzzle about before I go? You got any, any unicorns in there or anything like that? Oh, um, no. Uh, it's just like a house on a beach. A house on the beach. All right. You keep working with that and, and you stay out of trouble. You can't get pregnant from a, yeah, you can't get pregnant from, from a puzzle. So I like what I'm hearing here. You're a good kid. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and call you. Uh, I mean, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you. No, now, now I sound really weird. I'll, I'll, I'll call you later, Amanda. No, I will, I will talk to you later, okay? Okay. All right. Good night, Amanda. Good night. Bye. Bye. All right. Now let's go ahead and move on to our next caller here. Try to move these out real quick. And right now we have a, an area code 631. Hello? Hey, what's going on? Hey, it's John Rizek, you know, from two weeks ago or whatever. I went on the field trip for Indiana Jones. Oh, John, what's going on? No, wait a minute. Weren't you, weren't you the one who was supposed to make music for us at one time? What was that? Weren't you, did you offer to make uh, – no, that, I'm sorry. That was a guy named Ed Music. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you went on the field trip for Indiana Jones. How did that work yeah. out, man? Yeah, it was pretty fun. You know, just saw the movie whatever. Yeah. Even though you had to pay? Yep. <laughs> Everybody's right. talking about how how bad Indiana Jones is, man. I actually said I liked it. I, uh, I, I feel like a leper or something now. People jumping down my throat. You actually liked that movie? I, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I kind of did. What would you think about it? Well, me, now I'm kind of, you know, rethinking it. I liked it when I first saw it because it's, 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 like, it's a fun movie, so you, you kind of don't really realize the flow is until you've thought about it for a while. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I got you. So, yeah, I, I, uh, no, I thought the movie was okay, man. I, when I said I thought it was okay, a lot of people thought I was coming out like these people who were so nostalgic for Indiana Jones. I, I simply liked the movie. I thought it took me back to, to what all the other movies had done. It's not the best of the series, but it, it, it captured the essence of it. So, yeah, I thought it was all right. But I don't want to see Indiana Jones do another one. I'll tell you that. Or Harrison Ford or any of those numb nuts. I don't want to see George Lucas or uh, Steven Spielberg work on another one. Move on. Do something else. Shit. So what's your what's your uh, what's your question, man? Uh, I don't have a question. I have a um, and I, I have a I have an idea. That's what I have. Oh, um, you have an idea? Okay, I right. need those. All right. So the Hulk um, coming out seventy minutes of Blu-ray disc thing, whatever, right? Yeah, I've been hearing about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I what I think they should do is they should cut out Captain America on the Blu-ray disc and add them to the DVD, so that each of them have like a special thing, right? Well, I had a lot of people, they've been getting upset about this whole uh, Blu-ray thing. I mean, because they said they're coming out with 70 minutes of, of extra footage for the Hulk, and it's only going to be on Blu-ray. So, I <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if people want more added to it, being that if they want to see it, they're going to have to go out and buy a Blu-ray DVD player, which at some point I think we're all going to end up doing that anyway. I, I, Not yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm definitely getting a PlayStation 3 somewhere down the line just so I can have a, a Blu-ray player. And I'll tell you something. I I was uh I was talking bad about Blu-ray uh, a few weeks ago when we were doing the cold ones. Yeah, and, yeah, I, I remember. And I had yeah, I have to say, man, I, I've seen uh, I've seen Blu-ray recently, and I, I take back everything I say. Blu-ray is beautiful. I mean, maybe it depends on on the TV. Somebody was even telling me tonight it depends on what what movie you're watching because if it's an, if it's an old movie or something else that was on some bad film stock, then maybe it doesn't translate too well. But I also I, read re I also read recently in like I guess a paper or something that it's a big change between 720 or 1080p and 1080i. They said if the Blu-ray disc is on 1080p, then it's much better. Well, yeah, I mean, because you got more resolution there, so naturally that would be. And I'm thinking if you're going to make a, a 
if you're going to make a, a, a DVD that contains, uh, I guess, se- uh, 70 minutes more of uh, footage and plus a bunch of other features and whatnot, then Blu-ray, I guess, would probably be cost-effective. I don't know. I'm taking a guess. I don't know that much about Blu-ray, to be honest. But I'm, apparently they have the capacity to hold so much that think, – think about it. I mean, that's less packaging. That's only one, that's only one disc that you have to worry about. So I, I can see why it's a natural move to put something like that on Blu-ray. It, it possibly makes economic sense. But uh, here, I'm speaking out my ass. I really don't know that much about Blu-ray, to be honest with you. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying in my limited knowledge. But Yeah. I, I, oh, look, I they're doing all kind of stuff to make you. I mean, this is the new age we live in, and, and I can't say it's, it's bad. I mean, it's, it's kind of a smart model. You go see a movie, and now they're, they're going to actually probably – they're probably it's kind of shitty and it's kind of smart in a way because they're probably going to withhold more story now. And if you want the whole story, if you want the whole movie, then you're going to have to get it on, on a Blu-ray disc or whatever the format is at the moment. So yeah. it's a whole new way of marketing, man. It's It's – some people think it's bad. Some people say, hey, it, it, it just enhances the experience. I mean, if you get the complete story but you want more, then fine. I don't know. Time will tell. So, All right. Um, yeah. I just wanted to say one other thing. Um, sure. I'm also a 13-year-old black belt, just like that other kid before. And uh-huh. he said, oh, you shouldn't be scared of any movies if you're 13. I'm not ready to fight the Cloverfield monster right now. Oh, no. Hell no. You know, it's, it's funny because... Cloverfield, look, I'm not scared of big giant monster movies, but for some reason, Cloverfield scared the hell out of me, man. I don't know why. It was just because a big giant monster attacking the city, I, and, and, and you're trapped on the island, I, and plus you didn't get to, you didn't get to see the, the, all of the monster, and it had those little things attached to it, too. That movie freaked me the fuck out, man. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I also like the, um, you know, when they're in the, the uh, subway, and then he's got the night vision on, and you just see the creatures and all that. Yeah, you know what? I, of course your black belt's going to be. I'd like to see your little black belt ass go out there and try and fight the Cloverfield monster and a big foot comes down on you. Yeah, you'd be scared of the Cloverfield monster. I'm not, I don't care how many belts you got. <laughs> you know, so anyway, well, it's good talking to you, man. And uh, I will, uh, I'm, from, the, from the way it looks, I'm, <laughs> I'll probably end up talking to you again. So thanks for the, uh, thanks for the call. All right, apparently he can't hear me. I don't know what happened with him, but we're going to hang up on his ass and... We only have a little time left, so we're going to take another call here. Oh, now it decides to screw up. God damn it. All right, here we go. And we have a call from area code 860. 860, Hello? you there? Hello? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, what's going on? Hey, Corey, it's Melissa. How are you? Hey Melissa, how you doing? Damn, Melissa, you sound you sound pissed. You're like, hello? No. Hello? <laughs> I was typing in the chat room and then I was like, oh, I think I'm on. Let me let me see if I am. How you doing? Good to talk. Good, to how you. are I you? To you in a while. I know. Doing, I I was wondering like if like you were mad at me or something. I was like, I haven't heard from Corey in a while. Hmm. Look, well, you're the one who's working. <laughs> come on, you know you're the one who's in school. And the only time I really talked to you was when you actually uh, text messaged me. Yeah. And that's when I actually. Of course, I'm drunk that. dialing. <laughs> oh, if I'm drunk dialing, yeah. Now, you got to bring that all out in the open, don't you? Look at this. Maybe you I do. Oh, well, you know, last week's conversation was interesting, too, when um, Gone to Sleep called in, so that was fun, too. I got to say, this girl saved my life in New York. I was walking around. I, okay, I shouldn't tell the kids this, but yes, I was walking yeah. around New York, and I was kind of stumbling drunk and didn't know where the hell I was going. And you and I talked, and you actually got me through the, the city. <laughs> yeah, I tried to. So, um, hi, everybody. Now, now, for people who think that I'm, I'm calling Melissa to hit on her because everybody it's been it's been rumored that I call girls on the internet to to, to uh, actually flirt and hit on them. Uh, Melissa has a boyfriend. I've never seen a picture, of Melissa. You just somebody talk we started talking boyfriend. about. He has talked to my boyfriend too. And I talk, I've spoken to your boyfriend, who is actually a very very nice guy, very cool. Yeah, I, I, actually, I, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. I want to talk to him. You seem like a nice guy. You, you're boring now. I know, right? Exactly. Whatever. Well. Um, so I'm sorry I haven't been able to listen to the whole show. I just got home from work, but um, I have a question. What's going on? Um, have you ever walked out of a movie? Have I ever walked out of a movie? Hell, yeah. hell yeah. I try not to do it, but I, and let me tell you something. It took all my strength to sit and watch Meet the Spartans. But <laughs> yeah. uh, I've walked out of a few movies. I walked out of Bewitched. That's one that comes to mind. I walked out of... Uh, 
Oh man, we walked out. It was, it was some romantic comedy we walked out of recently. Now it's it's our job to stay in there and watch movies, so I try not to make a habit out of that. So I don't do it that often. But mm-hmm. every now and then, there's a movie that you know, you say to yourself, okay, this shit is not gonna get any better. It yeah. can't at this point. I mean, it's halfway through. Unless the Cloverfield monster comes with this movie, you know, starts attacking, there's nothing going to nothing's going to save this. And we allow, we give ourselves a, a one, we give ourselves a free ticket. We we give ourselves one movie every year to walk out of. <laughs> awesome. And and when we do that, we we try not to do it ever again. We yeah. we we stay, but uh, we allow ourselves one pass. So, you know what? I have uh, I have one call remaining, uh, Melissa. And yeah, you and I talk all the time. So, talk. yeah, no, you and I talk all the time, and you you catch me again. But I want to I want to get this last call before we go. Sure. See you later. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. We have one more caller here, which probably means nobody else is listening right now, and it is hung up. But I think what I'm doing here, being by myself and being able to talk to people one on one, is something that helps this whole thing immensely. I'm having a better time. I think I get more callers in. That is if I do a, a longer show. If I ever do this again like this, it'll have to probably be an hour and a half. But let's go ahead and take our last caller here. And that last caller would be from area code 240. 240. You are on the air. I'll try one more time. Area code 240. All right, we got one minute left anyway. Apparently that person's asleep or something. So, as I said, this show was not really promoted, publicized, or anything. It was just done under the radar. And I just want to do this to get people's opinions on how this works with me doing it alone, talking to you. So, hopefully, I'll be able to get some feedback from some people. Feel free to write me, post it up in a blog or something. I don't care. Just let me know what you thought. And... I think we only have a few seconds left. My computer's doing all kind of weird refreshing. Well, you know what? I think I have time to take probably one more call before we get out of here. Somebody did call up. Area code 910? What's up? It's Russell. Hey, we, okay, we, oh, who's this? Russell, man. Oh, Russell. Man, you know what? I had wanted to talk yeah. to you because I wanted to know how your love life was working out. Oh, no, nah, man. I'm still doing the single thing, man. But old girl's stripping. The girl I'm oh, talking about last time? Yeah, she's stripping, man. I thought you were going to this girl alone, man. It's oh, I love her alone, man, but she's stripping, man. Enough okay, said about that. I have to ask you a question, though. I have to ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. Ask me this question. All right, because, all right, top three movies that made you feel uncomfortable. My top three are, like, Running Scared, Audition, and Dead Ringers. Oh, I tell you what. I, can't, I don't have time to get into it now, but Audition, that's one that really uh, – me and Leon saw it. Leon couldn't even hang in there. He had to walk out. He, I had to tell him what was happening through the door of the theater because it was a critic screening. And I said, oh, psh, man, the, the foot just got cut off. And he's like, oh, I can't come back in there. Anyway, we're about to end this show, man. I think uh, the show is going off. So, uh, Well, I'll try to call next week, man. I'll try to call man, next week. I will, I'll try to have another show on next week because I, I want to talk to you about this girl, man. Now, you told me to leave this girl alone. God damn. What's, what's it going to take, Russell? What's it going to take? I'm done. I'm done, man. You ain't got to okay. I'm done with it. Okay. All right. All right. You, you and I might have some sim- similar problems. I'll counsel you. You counsel me. Okay. Exactly, man. All right, man. I'll holler at you. All right, man. You. All right. Take Peace. it easy, man. All right. Peace. Bye. All right. That's the show, everybody. Uh, I don't know if we're off the air yet or not. It might have cut off prematurely. I'm not sure. But anyway, I will say a proper goodbye to you. And I had a great time. I hope it went a little bit smoother than it has in the past. And I will try my best, if this is okay with you to try to have a show next week. All right. This is Corey from Spill. I'll talk to you later. Bye.